Hello, this is attorney Jeremy Hogan and welcome to another Legal Briefs. Today I'm going to show you some methods that us lawyers use to win arguments in court with other lawyers, but most importantly with our spouses. And the secret sauce to these techniques involves cheating. Yes, cheating. I'm going to show you some logical fallacies that you can make use of in an argument that are extremely hard to counter. But don't worry, we are talking about little baby cheating techniques. Kind of like Ben Johnson and Lance Armstrong had a cute little baby. Okay, if you are ready to win that argument with your significant other or spouse, prepare to be king of the household because sometimes in life, you just have to put your morals and ethics aside and cheat to win, even if it's against your spouse. This legal brief is sponsored by the Hogan and Hogan Divorce Department because it's never too late. Okay, let's get to it. First in time and perhaps most important when you're going to win an argument is to frame the question in a way that helps you and hurts your opponent. And the most devastating way to do that is to beg the question, which means to assume your side of the argument is correct in the way you frame the argument itself. It's a type of circular reasoning, a circular argument. Here's a straightforward example. The iPhone is the best smartphone because no company makes better electronics than Apple does. Now these state, I mean, this statement technically begs the question because you are arguing that the iPhone is the best smartphone because Apple makes the best iPhone. But in real life, if you do this, you are being way too obvious and you will get called out on your bad reasoning. You have to be more subtle. In the legal world, in a breach of contract case, for example, when I'm in front of the judge, I might frame the question as the plaintiff, the party who's claiming the breach. Judge, there is simply no evidence that the defendant can provide that it did not breach this contract. So you see what I did there? I'm supposed to prove that there was a contract and that the defendant breached it, but instead I am assuming that there is a contract and that the defendant breached it and absent some evidence to the contrary, I'm gonna say that they did breach the contract. So it's circular reasoning. Same thing that with the iPhone example, just more subtle. Here's an example of a circular argument that people actually believe and have told me many times when discussing politics and like most fallacies in life, it was captured on The Simpsons. America, take a good look at your beloved candidates. They're nothing but hideous space reptiles. Oh. It's true, we are aliens. But what are you going to do about it? It's a two-party system. You have to vote for one of us. He's right. This is a two-party system. Well, I believe I'll vote for a third-party candidate. Go ahead. Throw your vote away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so have the aliens played the game very well? A vote for a third-party candidate is a waste of a vote because no one votes for third-party candidates and therefore it's a waste of your vote. It's the perfect begging the question argument and if not recognized by your opponent, they are in trouble. So now getting back to your love life, let's say you've decided that you just watched your first episode of Breaking Bad and you want to leave your teaching job and become a drug dealer and your wife says absolutely not and an argument ensues. Now, after you get past her utter shock and disgust, you say, please support me in my decision. All I've ever wanted and needed is your love and support. Now look at the tough spot you've just put her in. This disagreement is obviously about whether the decision is a good choice or not. But by suggesting that someone who loves and supports you would love and support this decision, you assume, of course, that this decision is a good one. It's a circular argument. In order to get around this, she will have to first catch what you just did, and then she will have to argue back to the fact that this is a bad decision. And that is a hard thing to do with just a split second to think about it. Good luck with the DEA, by the way. Okay, the next argument cheat we're going to talk about is the jujitsu move of changing the tense. This argument comes straight from ancient Greece by way of Aristotle. Aristotle said that all arguments can only be about three issues. One, blame, which talks about things that happened in the past. Two, values, which is an argument about current things and how you feel about them. And three, choice, which is an argument of what to do in the future. The general idea here in our second method is to change the point of the tack. I use this if I'm losing an argument. For example, if I'm losing the breach of contract argument, which is an argument about blame or what happened in the past, I will change the argument from the past to the future. Judge, even if you find that the defendant did not technically breach the contract, the defendant's position will inevitably lead to a breach before the contract concludes, and we don't have to wait for that moment, judge, to bring this lawsuit. That's called a uh, preemptory breach. But men much smarter than me have used this tactic. Here's Marvel's genius Tony Stark in the scene where he had just created Ultron by accident, and Iron Man is taking flack for it. It's so terrible. This could have been avoided if you hadn't played with no, something you don't I'm understand. Sorry. I'm sorry. It is funny. 
It's a hoot that you don't get why we need this. Tony, maybe this might not be the time. Really? To... That's it. You just roll over, show your belly every time somebody snarls. Only when I've created a murder bot. We didn't. We weren't even close. Were we close to an interface? Well, you did something right. And you did it right here. The Avengers were supposed to be different than she. Anybody remember when I carried a nuke through a wormhole? No, it's never come up. Save no, New York? Never heard that. Recall that? A hostile alien army came charging through a hole in space. We're standing 300 feet below it. We're the Avengers. We can bust arms dealers all the live long day, but that up there, that's... That's the end game. How are you guys planning on beating that? So, Tony just screwed up and he defends himself, which is pretty gutsy, when you just created a murder bot. But he knows he screwed up, so he changes the tense from the past tense of blame to the future tense of choice. He says, the super powerful aliens are coming and that's why I'm messing around with killer robots. What's your guy's plan for saving the earth? Beautiful switch from blame to choice. Maybe he really is a genius. Maybe he'll save the world. So men, especially keep this in mind when you've screwed up and you know it, switch the argument from the past action and blame to either the present tense of values or the future tense of choices. Honey, I'm sorry I blew all our savings on that penny stock. I was just doing it for us for our future. You just switch from the past, your blame, to the present and you move the discussion away from what you did to screw up to the why you did it, which is a discussion of values and that's where you are on much firmer ground. Or even better, you can apologize and move to what you can do to save the money up again, which is an argument about choices. Now, one last technique, but not the least technique and one that lawyers use most often, the argument to a false authority. This trick is actually very effective and has led to many sales of toothpaste. Nine out of 10 dentists recommend, is it Colgate or Crest? Anyways, lawyers are called on every day to provide the court relevant case authority for the court to follow. Sometimes the authority is well thought out and on point, sometimes it's not. So it's not enough just to cite authority, the authority has to actually be an authority and also has to be relevant to your argument. Once again, The Simpsons shows us the way. My little friend here, Blinky. Many of you consider him to be a hideous genetic mutation. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. But don't take my word for it. Let's ask an actor portraying Charles Darwin what he thinks. Hello, Mr. Burns. Oh, hello, Charles. Uh, be a good fellow and tell our viewers about your theory of natural selection. Glad to, Mr. Burns. You see, every so often Mother Nature changes her animals, giving them bigger teeth, sharper claws, longer legs, or, in this case, a third eye. And if these variations turn out to be an improvement, the new animals thrive and multiply and spread across the face of the earth. So you're saying this fish might have an advantage over other fish. It may in fact be a kind of super fish. I wouldn't mind having a third eye, would you? <laughs> no. And there you have it. The Chernobyl fish is just a regular Darwinian mutation. But it's hard to argue with an expert and many people give great deference to those with more experience or letters after their name. So how do you make use of this in your everyday life? In any argument, you can appeal to an authority and the key is to make the appeal to a person or persons that your opponent respects or appreciates. This can be a dirty trick, but we've come this far in the video, let's not stop now. With your spouse, the obvious choice would be to appeal to your spouse's parents, assuming he or she likes them. Now going back to our previous career choice, Breaking bad argument, you might argue. But honey, your, your dad was a teacher and he decided to go to law school and become a lawyer and he said making a change from his unhappy career in teaching was the best decision he'd ever made. So now you are forcing her to distinguish, if she's quick, between her dad's decision and yours, but at least you've got her on her back heels even if she figures it out. I hope she doesn't end up hitting you with a frying pan. Not my fault. And there you have it, three argument strategies that are not really fair, but they do work and they might work with your spouse. But let me leave you with a bonus strategy. Sometimes it's best to forget about winning and just say, I'm sorry, tell me how you feel and just listen. You'll thank me later.